Okay, Morphling Band first phase, which is interesting to me. Um, I O Band first phase. It's been like every series. Snapfire Band, Enchant Band, two of the other ones. Timber Saw maybe, but it wasn't really banned first phase very often. Chen potentially, they banned the last track. Slardar is the other obvious one. They Oracle Troll. Troll is a, clearly the carry that's favorite against Slar because you can blind him and prevent him from getting the bash, which gives you some uh, hit matchups, like one place where Troll can actually beat Slar. Beat, beat, uh, or w w one carry that can actually beat Slar in these death fights in the laning stage. You can also, Oracle's also quite good because you can banish Sprint, or you can dispel it with uh, Fortune's End. So that is another cool matchup advantage. The Oracle Troll. Razor is going to steal Troll's damage, so it's a decent matchup there. Uh, they ban Timbersaw to deal with, or to give them a better laning stage potentially. Um, Razor would have a lot of trouble against the Timber. Um, they ban Orc Warden, which I'm not so sure about. Maybe it's a good Razor matchup, or like a, a bad matchup for Razor to play against. And then they ban OD, because OD is really good against Troll. Troll uses ulti, you banish him. By the time he comes out, his ulti is wasted, basically. Troll doesn't have enough lockdown either, so it just feels like OD would be able to save whoever Troll goes on as well. Tiny pick, not as common these days, but still can be very good. That'll be a four, most likely. Very good against Razor. You can toss Razor away if he chases Tiny. You can throw Avalanche. If he chases somebody, they pick Chen to lane stabilize. It should be pretty effective against both Tiny and Oracle. Mainly Tiny, because Tiny has no armor early, and he usually doesn't function super well as a right clicker. And Ch Chen has so much, but he can work against supports because you can like Ava toss somebody back. But if there's a creep there with the Chen, it's going to be a little bit harder, number one. Number two, it's just more physical damage to hit Tiny. And even if he does, you have a toss combos on Chen. Chen's got a lot of regen, so maybe that's less of a worry. Remaining. Chen's also going to allow them to hit buildings a bit quicker. Razor can kill creep waves, but Chen with raw damage is going to better be able to kill creep uh, kill towers after they kill the creep waves. Dark. Pick Darkseer. Darkseer Tiny's a lot better as a combo. Can make him run fast add an Iron Shield them to actually make him a threat for kills on Chen. Now Chen's got to be worried. Um, Surging, whoever gets uh, Static Linked, is also good. Vacuum Wall against Razor, I think, is just effective. It's pretty chaotic, typically. So Razor's going to have a little bit of trouble uh, getting through the mass of shit. His ulti's going to be less effective. Um, it also pushes out the lane, which Razor can push, but it takes him to level 6 to do it more or less. So I think it'll be a pretty effective against him in the lane if he goes there. And Medusa as well. Medusa quite good against Troll. Troll ultis and Medusa ultis. Troll gets stunned. Which way is his ulti? Uh, Life Stealer is pretty good against Troll because you can rage off the blind. But the downside is that Troll ulti against Life Stealer once he gets like Basher and stuff is quite effective. But Life Stealer should be able to just uh, ulti into a creep or something, I assume. Ban Earthshaker. Very good against blocking Troll off to making just like his life a lot harder. They kind of have some disable issues, so like something like a Fissure could like really fuck up their ability to take a fight. And then Underlord lowers damage with his aura against Troll. It's going to have uh, tanky items, which make Troll's sometimes mediocre damage a bit weak. And also um, Pit of Malice against Troll is going to be a pain in the ass. So in some ways, like Nigma really dictated the draft by picking Slardar first. They picked two heroes that match up really nicely against Slardar. Oh, and they made a support too, of course, with the Underlord pick. They picked these two heroes that match up well against Slardar, but, and the Razor look, pick looks fine, but now they got to pick like a hero that just like does really well, pick two heroes that do really well against Troll basically. So by dictating this like carry so early in the draft, they get to adjust their, a lot of the rest of the, basically three cores. They get to pick like three heroes that match up quite well against Troll. And because Secret picked a offlane hero that isn't a, a carry, it's now going to be like a mid troll probably, depending on what the lineup is. Could be Slark mid to leap away against Razor as well, but mid Razor, mid troll. 
If he gets flanked, he throws the slow axes and runs away. Both axes should work well. Um, but it kind of makes them like if this is like one of their cores and they have like three heroes that match up well against it, then they only get one other carry, you know. And I guess Lark is pretty good here, but I haven't seen um, Slaughter 4 either, so I'm kind of curious how that goes. This weapon looks very cool. But other than the Slark pick, which can be quite good here, especially against like Chen, um, I do like the, the Enigma draft against the Troll Warlord. It seemed clever, felt like they got a lot of advantages here. Consistently. The Dark Seer helped, but I don't know if it's going to help enough. Boots first day. I assume he'll go bash the deep, but not sure. I got three actually. And this isn't even like a great matchup for Troll is the problem. This is another good thing about picking the Razor, it's like, even if they try to dodge the lane, like they still have this like good lane matchup. Like he's gonna steal 20 damage here and now he's just like, good luck last hitting against me. Okay, it worked, but... So because Underlord doesn't want to lane against Slark, he's gonna go cut the creep wave. They'll rotate two heroes to deal with him. We got boots on Yapsor and Toss, so he can basically just bully him, and he's gonna have to die. He knows this, so he'll eventually die. Let's see where he goes next. Back bottom again. Crows over here to side pull. Slaughter did go bash first. Where do you take all this damage from? Gonna follow the darks here. <sighs> Ooh, surge level one A. Eh? Well, it's not terrible. This is why this is one of the nice things about him doing this. Is that if um, if he's got the boots here, he can just keep chasing with the bash. Even if he gets iron shell, I don't think he beats him probably, because slaughter's general base stats are pretty damn solid. Uh, but now he has to use Surge basically just to run away with the creep wave. If he tries to Iron Shell and go to the wave instead, Life so is probably fine. He's another hero that lanes well against Darkseer more or less. But yeah, this was like pretty punishing for Zai. Now GH is going to sit here and continue punishing. He deagros. Gets some denies. He, he should have had that one, but he right clicked and he, his hero had to walk. It's been quite effective so far. This does not look fun. Wave pushes in. He's not going to get like any experience here. He's going to have to go jungle now because he just can't fight against GH. He went win lace next just to give him overwhelming movement speed advantage. There's a bug. His movement speed is not 320. It's probably like 370. Now he's just following Zai. Nice. 
He's just gonna try to gank. He's here anyways. This has been really sick. GH is destroying right now. He's been doing so good. He tried to drag an attack over, but it didn't work. How's the other lane's been going? Underlord seems to be having some trouble too. God, that's so much damage. Nessun shift so good. Against melee heroes, man. Just jungling now. Oh, yes. It's a 14 deny razor. There's a lot of people with really tough lanes this game. He's trying to block it with his body. So at least then it'd be tossed him back. Underlord instead. Will rush. Yep, so his arcane boots is a level two tiny. He's got two kills and three assists. What the heck? Why do you get arcanes over tranquils? It's not very normal, I don't think. So squishy against physical damage. He's like a little faster, but he's not gonna get the skill. Looked like that was being blocked by the stout built in. Poor Underlord, so fucked, dude. Can't even TP. Still just pounce him. Yo. I feel really bad for the Underlord, or the offlaners in this game. It, doesn't, it does not look like an enjoyable experience. He TPs back. He's going to lose some creeps for this, but maybe this is justified. He's, he is pretty quick, I guess, to run back. It is a permeate, permagi after all. He gets pulled back with Kuro. <laughs> Line control dying again. It's being followed. He's like just on the edge of the range there. You are dead. Dead. You can run. You should run. Alright, kills Kuro. The only player having to go time on secret is, is just Slark. That's it. Nobody else is even close. Look at this. Like, okay. He actually gave up? Okay. Maybe a worthwhile. Ocean Heart. 
Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiance Top Tower is under attack. Sure, they get stunned by GH. Barely picked up by a puppy. Oh, he's going Deso. Weird face Deso. What's the purpose of this? Why Deso? Uh, very good against Tiny before he has his ulti. They'll be able to kill towers. Maybe. Um, it's not that good against Troll. He's got high base armor because he's going to have edgy items. Slark has decent armor when he gets a lot of steals, but... I, I'm. This is very weird. Maybe it's their their ability to tower push that they're saying like, well, we don't have less track. We don't have. Oh, I guess they've got they've got Slardar as well as the other thing. It's got to be that. Oh, it's Armlet. I'm sorry. It is Armlet Deso. Okay, that makes more sense. I thought it was just like phase into Deso. I was like, what? This is very bizarre. But going Armlet into Deso makes sense. Then it's already a decent build. You're not going to farm as fast as something like a Mjolnir, but it's going to naturally combo really well. This is the build that I predicted would be the the one when they reworked feast um it hasn't been it's been mjolnir into halberd but if they already have a slaughter on their team that can lower enemy armor by 10 having armlet deso on life stealers are really going to be good because his raw damage is going to be super high his attack speed is going to be good and he's going to be able to destroy carries because of the amp damage so that's why just like normal slightly altered build to fit the the game Cleaned him up. Zai so surprisingly has only died one time this game. Here he's killing his elude or his uh, iron shell. Royal jelly for the underlord. Really? Interesting. Okay. Well, if you play Slardar support, apparently GH believes you should max Slytherin Crush, which makes some sense. Um, cooldown's the same, mana cost goes up, but it's pretty small. The main thing is that the slow duration is massive, up to six seconds. So you're almost up to a, like a perma slow with Slytherin Crush. The damage goes up as well, so even as a support, like if you don't have that many items, you're not right clicking that often. Bash of the Deep is just not going to be that much damage because it's not you're not going to feel comfortable if you've only got like excuse me a bracer to your name to like hit people eight times in a fight. So if he instead has points in Slytherin Crush, he's still contributing damage and utility while also amplifying damage with corrosive haze. So I think this is why he's gone this skill build. Yes, he could have had more sprint maybe and therefore had better chances to land the stun in the first place, but if he's a support, he's kind of sitting around waiting to stun most of the time anyways. That's kind of how I see it. No points in Storm Surge just yet. Mech Rush over here. Where's it goes? Health. It's really good to have on Razor extra movement speed here, extra movement speed here. Once he starts getting Storm Surge, he's going to be stupid fast. Kind of curious why you want Arcane's this game though, not like the typical Tranquil's build. Because he, maybe because he was farmed or something, but that was a really fast Diffusal Blade. That said, this is going to be a really fast Deso also. How the fuck is Miracle so farmed? Why does he have so much? He's only, got, he's only been in one kill. Has he just been farming like stupidly fast? He's got like 40 more last hits. I guess Slark ran around a lot to kill heroes. It's probably it. 
Whereas Lifestealer only hit creeps the whole time. There's the Yules now. Yeah, he got like 20 movement speed out of Storm Surge. Crow should have mech coming nice soon. God. He didn't want to TP out. Oh, he actually can't TP out. He easily gets used. He has to use Rage. Yeah, and now he's going to die to Roots. That's a really big kill. So I'm guessing he TP'd home and then he ran bottom or something. Stesso so was finished though. Those are really big kill. I'm sure they got a lot of gold out of that. A huge amount. And he's not farming for 20 seconds, of course. Is I over here still struggling? Going for four staff. Clumsy, and that's pretty good on Razor. Singing about using it. So, what I got Yules. Yeah, he's gonna go for it. Boom speed on Sardar is really good too, though. Is that a whole drum? That was a whole drum. That's rough, dude. It's like 25 attack speed Slark could have had just now. Trolls for ice. Infesting Slarders makes a lot of sense too. Movement speed bonus. It's really good. I guess phase is better than treads. You don't really need the attack speed. You've got a lot from feast, armlet, 30 attack speed talent. Makes more sense to go phase. I think I've really underestimated Yule's Razor. I felt like it maybe wasn't as necessary anymore, but it's probably still really important for catching people. Looks kind of dead here, though. Or maybe not. I tried too hard to go like raw HP with magic resistance, but the benefits of Yules are just good. Because you can get so much damage from Static Link that by the time they drop down, you just kill them. You still get mo mobility advantage, I guess. And now he's going Halberd, which will be very good against Slark. It's 30% bonus heal. That's part of the reason that the Halberd built's so good on this hero. It's the extra heal from Feast and Open Wounds and stuff. They go take the tower. All it takes is Static Link and Slark knows he can't get the kill. 
the diffusal usage. Sorry, we're trying to get blink. Then he can blink stun every whatever 15 seconds. God, that's a long cooldown. Used to be like 12 or something. Now they play on the enemy side of the map. Yo, that was so quick by Crow. Uh. If he had chained stun just a little bit better. Might have killed him actually. He was gonna live with the south. It's not though. Maelstrom troll A. Maelstrom into Basher. Thirty percent extra life steal. I tried to toss him, that's why I had trouble. It looked like he didn't do anything, but... <laughs> Disarmed him to prevent the deny. Instantly infest, now they run back. That was really clean. Extremely clean. Here's his drone. Radiant Go on eggs next. In that escape. God, life shows so far ahead now. Are they gonna stop pushing? No. Because this is what you do when you gotta heal bomb things. It's kind of similar lineup. Like, all, all, a lot of the features of the last game are, are very reflected here. You got this carry guy that hits buildings very well and is hard to kill and is pretty good at team fighting. You're gonna back him up with your healing support that can help ensure that he doesn't die when shit hits the fan, which they can between mech, divine favor, and hand of god. And then here's your offlane hero who buys aura items. You have your mid hero. This game doesn't save people, but can help fight, kill heroes, prevent enemy heroes from being as effective. And then GH is playing um, not a saver, but a fighter as well. He's an initiator, so kind of similar functions. And then Secret does the right thing. They hit the back line with their heroes to try to get some kills before they get high ground. But in the meantime, they put Observer and Centaur at the perfect timing. Good usage, Yule's usage there. They didn't put that ward down. They would have definitely lost Crow instantly in this fight. They get the kill. Nisha's trying to run for his life. Horse is helping, but he's gonna die. He's got ulti now. This is not gonna end well. Just too much damage. Bill Yules him now. He dies. Just a little too much to pick up my Toma man. Zai surges but dies. They get a kill finally. Look at those cloves.
Oh, he's damn. I was like, why does he have so little armor? Ooh, that was a huge mistake. The minus armor is like crazy good against him right now. Look at that shit. This helper did. Still saw his window to attack. Back to the slow siege again. They do a very good job of the slow push. not using rage. Now using rage when he sees an opportunity. Now they're going to back till rage is back up again. Oracle ulti got used anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Draft was just so good. They opened the Slardar, their opponents are like, we got the Slardar counters, and then they're just like, well, we got the troll counter. And then... And then it just kept getting better. Troll has just been behind. The only hero that had a good game was Slark. Basically, but they had decent Slark solutions. Lifesteal really doesn't have to worry about Slark that much. He can always rage, he can disarm him, he lifesteals a lot. They backed each other up very well against the Slark. The Slark never really got them any solo pickoffs in the mid game section. Perfect time for mind control to show up. Saves Kuro's life. They haven't even fucking mech'd yet. Do a very good job covering each other. Yeah, they GG here. You are dead. This one was an outdraft. I think the last game, the previous game, I think um, Puppy kind of just picked some bad shit. Maybe. I, I mean, I don't. I don't know. Maybe he tried. I'm sure they tried a little bit, but maybe they picked a little bit flexible because they were up 2-0. Trying the DK offlane thing, and they let the OD through, and then it was just like the perfect pick. I think if Odie wasn't in that game, game three, they might have been able to win game three. But game four just seemed like a very clear outdraft to me, which was cool. By uh, it was a really cool Enigma draft. I don't know why it's twenty twenty and these things are still flipped the wrong way. These are the Enigma drafts. These are the secret drafts. But we are here, I believe. There's a patch. Let me check my Twitter. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I've seen a lot of politics stuff, guys. I don't know. Is there actually a patch? No? You got me? Okay. Uh, well played. All right, running ads. Be right back. I have the desires to play Morphling, but I am terrible at Morphling, so I probably shouldn't do that. I have desires to play Dragonite Meteor Hammer, but that's going to be terrible too. Is 
that it? Was Disruptor over nerfed? Uh, I don't think so. Didn't he like barely get nerfed? Take your body shots. I will. They nerfed mangoes, was the biggest thing. I'm well that hurt him. I guess Thunderstrike mana cost has gone up too. They nerf nerfing mangoes, and this was kind of big. Uh, Ags doesn't go for seven seconds anymore. That one's pretty small, though. The Ags nerf removed 780 damage from his ulti. I mean, it was a lot of damage in the right cases, but... What is my official title as a caster for Valve slash Dota? What does that mean? I don't work for a Valve or Dota. They hire me sometimes as a contractor, but I don't have a title. What does that mean? What should a position 5 pick versus Snapfire? Um, that's a good question. Probably just some strong hero, but it's... You, ba you need to have a really strong lane, basically. Something with AoE can help a little bit. Jukiro's alright, because it reduces attack speed, which makes their chase down a little bit less effective, I think. But I'm not quite sure what beats Snapfire in lane. His mobility advantages seem so huge. I didn't finish the series yet. No, we were running ads. We are about to watch game five. Oops, there it was. Also, oh, a really fast series, actually. Enchantress probably beats some um, Snapfire and Lean. It's one thing. I don't know if it's a great five though. Team secrets turn to ban dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Dire team secrets turn to ban. The ban Chen. Is Enchant gonna get through? Ban Slar. Chant still banned. Snapfire. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Oracle Band 2, that one's a little bit meta based on the series so far. Timber. We got Snapfire in the pool. Some other ones that are probably obvious that I'm missing. Nick Slush, they're tower pushers. Meteor Hammer. Edict. Lifesteal response good against stuns that are super unreliable. Not super unreliable, but unreliable. He can always rage out of fuels, for example. Can't help but feel that Nigma got the better first phase draft. God, I fucking hate this logo. I think it's so stupid looking. It's, it's, it's not like stupid, it's just utterly mediocre. 
I don't see it. Is there a G in here? I have trouble seeing it. Like I see, there's kind of some, there's an N here. And there's obviously an M, Nigma. The M is very prominent in that word. But I just, I don't think it's a good logo. Um, where are we at? Snapfire, Nick Slash, Life Stealer. Um, banned Bat Rider. Why'd they ban Bat Rider if they had Nyx? Maybe too worried about the laning stage disadvantages and like Lasso against Lesh is good because you can pull himself out of position. Ban, um, Rubik against Nyx makes sense. Lots of good spells to steal on both of these guys. Ban Razor against Lifestealer. Ban Beastmaster. Is Beast a snap counter? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. They picked Shadow Demon. Uh, Winter Wyvern picked first, though. Shadow Demon as a response. SD Seam is okay. The ulti is good against Leshrac if he ulses himself, so it gives you an option against him. You can save people with disruption. So on paper, Shadow Demon's decent against Lesh and other Yule's carriers. They pick Centaur though. Centaur has, remember what I said earlier about damage advantage against Lifestealer? Centaur is a hero that's very good at that. It's been consistently picked over Pro Dota as a high damage offlaner to contest a low damage safe lane hero. It is a little bit difficult to stun Life Stealer though, and they don't have very good setup other than like Nyx Stun or Winter Assassin or Winter Wyvern Ulti. Um, they pick Tiny, that's going to be a Tiny Core, probably a 2, I'm guessing. Which, I mean, unless it's like a Snapfire Core, but I think it's more likely it's a Tiny Core than a Snap Core. Snap Core is not, doesn't really do that much. I'm just saying they, uh, it helps to have a stun setup that reliably can catch a life stealer, whether a silence and a stun or something else. They pick Pango, which will give them a very good team fight. That's probably their three. Could be their two actually. And then Miracle carry Faces Void with very cool set. It's got a lot of expensive things. This is expensive, that's expensive. I don't know how expensive this hat is, this face is. The one with the brain missing is pretty expensive, like a couple hundred, I think. The bracers are like 200, though. Anyways, um, Void against this gives them pretty good team fight. This is the one way to do like Chronosphere on Lifestealer with stun follow up. So their ability to team fight is like incredibly good right here. Leshrac, Nyx Assassin, Winter Wyvern, Centaur, Void, it's like they're all good team fight heroes. And that's something that Secret's kind of lacking. Shadow Demon's like okay at team fighting, but he works better against lineups that are like single target kills. So if they Chronosphere like one guy and he disrupts them it's really good but other than that it can have some issues they've got like snapfire ulti but like they have some combos that can work well with snapfire but i'm not super sold we'll see how yapster does with it though i'm curious to see how the game goes but the team fight of um enigma looks really strong to me Like almost has a face. It's very close. From mind control, ooh. Offlane Pango with a snap. He's going scatter blast to get last hits over Fire Snap Cookie where he could get a kill. Disrupts so he doesn't have to worry about contesting the 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 rune. Tiny mid. Could potentially do like disruption mid into toss back, but unlikely. Kind of a weird looking item build. Like this guy's got 14 damage over Matoma Min. Which basically offsets the power of the quelling.
Just trying to do harass on a crow so he doesn't contest as much. It's bad for you, I'm sorry. Didn't get two yet, so. Ooh, Zai looks dead to you a little bit. He could jump away, but he didn't want to have to waste it. If he upstairs too, he'll be fine there, but... Died a little bit quick. He missed the range creep or something. Those are really close. This dual lane is actually like decent. That's what it seems like to me. Like they paired like a kind of a week three kind of. Pengo's ability to like fight to the death is not very good, and that's kind of where Snapfire's uh, strives is like having cookie follow ups with other disables, but they they sacrifice their laning stage a little bit to go for other stuff instead. Not that the lane is necessarily terrible, I guess, but. It's just a little bit weak in terms of them getting kills. Not really sure what Puppy's been doing down here. I'm gonna go back and watch though, I'm slightly curious. Again, he got disruption so that he could disrupt to guarantee the last hit. He's gonna run all the way bottom. Trading hits, but he doesn't really trade really well. He can disrupt, which will guarantee that the pull through doesn't. The Diego shouldn't happen, but it will still work. If you have Nightmare, it works better because it's 4 seconds. It's only 2.75. Goes around to pull the creeps. Puppy's going to run after him, but can't really do that much because he's got boots, so he's way faster. He'll come over here and try to guarantee the last hits. Disruption is going to work this time. This creep ran a kind of a weird direction, so he'll still get one, but... By doing this, it basically guarantees that this creep wave doesn't get denied. Away from Lifestealer, basically. Now that this is still great for Lifestealer. Trying to pull, semi-successful, Nyx ends up pulling two creeps instead. He pulls at the large camp instead, gets a little clap in. Vanishes to get the last hit. He's done pretty well. So in some ways SD like help guarantees that the pull, through pull doesn't happen, but Nyx was already so early so I don't necessarily know if they did it for this reason, because I think that Nyx was in the early part of the draft. I think the center came later. So the third or the fourth? I think it was the fourth pick. I think it was like Wyvern and then Centaur. So I think the Shadow Demon was picked before that. So I don't think they necessarily picked Shadow Demon to be like, oh, we can banish them when they pull the creep way through because therefore it would leave Centaur and Nyx in this, or, and Lifesteal in this 1v1 that favors him. Um, as you can see, he bought Blades of Attack really early, and this isn't super common. Some A lot of times Lifestealers will go like Javelin first or whatever because they're like, oh, I want to finish my Maelstrom really fast. But if this Centaur has a huge base damage advantage, he needs to compete with that. Otherwise, he's going to lose the lane by too much. Like, see, Centaur's got 17 and 7. This is literally the 14 damage advantage that Centaur has at play. So, made worse, of course, by the fact that they have a Shadow Demon, of course. But um, I think this is a pretty good matchup. They basically pick Centaur to, like, win this lane. And then Lifestealer has got to buy damage items to try to compete. So he's rushing towards phase as soon as possible so that he can actually contest the lane. Shadow Demon will finally get a pull. And then... A little mana burn here, but really doesn't matter that much. Banish to the creep wave. Doesn't get pulled by him. Hey, that was a good shadow poison. So now we're caught up. It certainly can do some damage, but it's not like guaranteed easy. Oop. Down to creeps. That was close. The Hedra Centauri. Oh, he almost looked. Love when Shadow Poison is not that great. Mind Control brings his regen out. 
mid lane lush track favorite apparently, at least in this game. Avatoss is a failure. Didn't get the bonus damage. Now he's worried about the stun. The stun missed actually. I don't think killing the lush is very easy. Yeah, this is why he bought two bracers to slain. Like, the only way he loses his lane is if he gets bursted down, and that, because that's what Tiny does, right? You do Avatos, you do a lot of damage. If he goes Null Talismans, he's got more mana, he's got more spell amp, but, like, he's pretty vulnerable. But here he's got 12 strength instead of 6. He's got an extra 10% equivalent magic resistance, so much lower chance that he dies when he gets gone on. So he rushes the double bracers, that way when the gank does come, he doesn't feed. Tiny doesn't get to snowball this into some advantages that get some faster timings, and then he gets to blink Avatos people around the map repeatedly, which fucks up the whole game for Nigma instead. He can just die in his lane. He won't die in his lane, and everything will be better, basically. And then sometimes this will happen. He was trying to get a solo kill here. Although Wyvern is also stupidly tanky, I must I might point out here. Ring of Basilius and Magic Wall, that's six stats. What an easy kill. He's trying to kill him though. I mean I don't, I don't even know if we would have gotten him, honestly. This is like 450 damage. Plus like It was like 800 magic damage or something about there. He would have had to attack like three times, and he would have had Avas or Magic Sticks, two of those, and a Matt Fairy Fire. I don't think he dies there. I mean, I, I didn't realize that Winter Wyvern's base HP was so. The strength game was so damn good, but. Alright, and then on the other side of the map, what do we see? Miracle walks back and hides. TP's bottom. Because he's six and he wants to kill. Matumba's really low here. Kind of cool. Toma barely lives, he moves away and TPs, knowing like, eh, he's gonna go back and hit creeps, he's greedy. This is, very, this is a really cool rotation by Miracle. Because there's like no other situation where Lifestealer dies. Because basically there was a fight, I assume. Centaur's not 6 yet, he's like, I'm fine. I'm just gonna hit creeps, I'm gonna go back up to full HP slowly, I'll get a couple more gold, I don't need to retreat fully. But because Miracle recognizes the farming patterns of what you do as a core, he's like, oh sick, I can rotate for this. He's watching, sees him below, he's like, I can easily gank. So he rotates bottom, that's gonna force mind control to jungle. The only thing that's bad about doing this is that now there's nobody top to hit creeps there. So what will happen instead? is that somebody's gonna go top to try to get as much golden experience as they can. In this case, it's GH. He will be mildly successful. He's got a lot more damage than I thought he would. But just a bracer. Now Matoma Man goes top. This bottom is basically opened up at this point. Currently cheesing mid. I was like, how did Shadow even get a kill? I can't wait to watch how that goes. So there's the Avatos. Doesn't do fucking anything. Now they're just falling apart big time. Tiny does not have very many last hits mid. They basically lost. Two lanes, at least. Possibly three. They haven't lost top, but it hasn't gone incredible. And now they switch mind control to, off to safe lane, because this is the lane typically where people start pressuring next. Yo, this weapon is so cool. Big fan. Mind control set is legit. Well, it's all the same set, I see. If 
Spanish Lust so he can't chase. This is so hard to kill him. Until they get full Avatos. That'll be a kill now. Well played by Nisha. Life Stealer is for sure fucking dead. Oh, he needed that stun to hit. And they're missing some crucial disables on Lesh here. Oh, okay, never mind. He cleaned him up. Three. Get some of Shadow Poison. That makes this passable now. Looks really bad otherwise. Bad time for a bash. Miracle owning, use time dilation skill that early. It's worth getting like one point probably. The extra slow stuff is quite good. Tiny still doesn't have his ulti yet, but that's usually because it's better to go what he's doing. They ward this, he's I know. He can jump for this. Probably knew that he hadn't used that he already used jump. But that's another big kill. They're kind of just dumps train this game. So they didn't get the... they lost experience for that. That was actually really big for mind control. Just having a very good game. No lightning. That should do it though. Nisha may not be the tiny whisperer, guys. Just feel like, why is I I I, I don't know. I have to go back and watch, but like, why is he here doing this job? This is like something that I do when I play core. Sometimes I'm like, I I guess I'm a support now. It's like I go around and try to get shit done. And that's a lot of times what you need to do is tiny. And maybe that was their plan as a team was that tiny is the space creator, but because he didn't get any less rack kills, he just never was really that far ahead. And feels hard. In the meantime, Life Stealer is getting free farm top, but he's not that farmed yet. Oh my fucking god. This game looks over, guys. To me. This difference is so big. They just dumpstered them so hard in the lanes. This is why people draft for lanes. It's a really big deal. If it happens, the game becomes like this. If you, if you win your lanes really hard. Toss back. Great stun by Lesh though. Fortunate vanish. Great dodge of the uh, Splinter Blast. It's gonna be a miracle kill. Never mind, he ran away just in time. Man, Zai deserves this kill so bad, but he's not gonna get it. Tried to toss him too. Now he gets chronoed. Catches both just barely. And Zai really deserved that one. I guess a regen rune. Which means that they get to keep pushing. If he doesn't get a regen here, he has to go back to base to heal. And then they're less likely to push down here. But because he got it, they will keep going. Pressure does not stop. get the kill. He doesn't have magic resistance yet, so he's pretty vulnerable still. They did that basically perfectly, but just a little bit too late. I still are catching up a little bit. really was a really good series. I've been I've enjoyed watching it. That was really well done.
He's not going to see it coming because it comes from trees, so. He does the first stun, that guarantees the second stun. They got enough damage to get him so low. Even if he could rage afterwards, he still would have probably died. Well played. Now they get to bounce between these two areas. Flesh will destroy the tower now, though. Bracers into Yules. So they encounter the Yules, but he's still pretty tanky. But they are just all over, dude. They are fucking all over. It's a lot harder. Should have used that earlier, maybe. How do they just show up to this? It's crazy. He moves over here. They have a toss, they all know. They all just start running. It just always feels like their whole team is there. Rotate over, and Nisha dies again. Still out of the game. Another one of those wards. I really gotta put these over here more. This one's quite nice. If you're radiant, it makes sense. If you're a dire, you'd probably want to put it on this one. So you want vision over here, most likely. Although this vision is good too. Good ulti by Crow. Thomas is trying desperately to get kills. He's doing pretty good damage. I think that's a kill. Yep. Okay. It was a good fight. How many buybacks, though? Not sure. And soul catcher over shadow poison. It's hard to get five stacks, but it's pretty easy to just cast soul catcher and kill somebody. Pretty good on Pango too. You can use it on yourself to move and stop in place, and you get an extra rolling thunder hit on somebody. I believe he is dead. This works really good on Wyvern because it increases Ma Lord's magic resistance, which increases all of this damage. Chronoed Pango. Oh, my god. Oh, see. Wow. 
The time dilation actually wrecked him. I thought he was fine. But it's barely slowed down the time for his last one. I mean, that, that was even better with new time dilation. Like, it's... He had a better chance with this change time dilation than the last one, but... Rough one. I want to go back and watch to see how Miracle knew about the chrono. I want to see what that looked like from his perspective. So he smokes bottom. He's got Chronosphere. Centaur is pushing the lane. He's running over to this fighter. He finds him. He jumps. He jumps. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. He saw the jump AoE. He saw the the stab. If in, in some ways, it would have been better for Zai if he had not stabbed this way. Because by stabbing this way, there's this visual indicator basically that shows like, okay, he's over here. Imagine if he stabs this way instead. If he doesn't see where he jumped, he doesn't see the stabs, and he doesn't know where the angle is. Because if you see the stabs, you know where he is. So, you could criticize Zai maybe for not stabbing to the right, or stabbing to the left. Because then Miracle might not have seen where he had jumped to. And then he wouldn't have been able to Chronosphere. But that's very small stuff. Not really his fault in the moment when you like, oh shit, there's a void, you know? I mean, dying is a big mistake, yes, but I, I don't... That's like one of those small things where you can like watch the replay and be like, oh wow, I wouldn't have died if this small thing, if I just the small thing in behavior. And in the future, yeah, he's not gonna maybe do that. But in those little moments where he's like, I need to get away instantly, and he happened to move his mouse up instead of a different direction, it's like those those things are gonna happen. And only like really good players will punish you. Typically. It's not the most unbelievable thing, I would say. This incredible farm speed. I'm, I'm confused. Why did he do this? Why, why did he stab the wyvern? I thought he would stab the um the lesh for sure. So I think he thought that. No, nah, Shield Curse only level one. They're probably just ready to get two, I guess. Didn't need to waste the damage. Yeah, that's definitely better than Broom Handle. Instead, though, he can't chrono this. This way, if he time walks on on top of somebody, he can just net them. More or less guarantee kills. So they're smoking out of their base to try to get something done. Because the net worth advantages are bad. It's going to veil. Interesting. Trying to get a kill any way they can. And I guess with Shadow Demon, they have a better chance to burst somebody down. Well, that's the worst possible hero for it to be, because he has an Aegis, so even if they kill him... It doesn't give you much. Kind of the same thing here as before. Yo, I had a clumsy net against a Penguin once, that shit was so good. 
Because then if I find him, I can just chain interrupt him multiple times. Oops. I don't know, man. This game looks kind of over. Makes sense, he has a lot of magic damage. That was actually really sick. So it wasn't just the Pango that did a lot of damage there, it was the Soul Catcher. It's a Soul Catcher on 4, which is why, why he went in, because he's like, oh, I'm stunning all these heroes. He got them all quite low. The puppy ran away too far away there. <laughs> 